Slow websites are a pain, geeks. We've already talked about this topic. But what can we do about poorly performing websites? In short, nothing. You can do nothing. Uh, that's not true. So, owning a slow website is like being the overly optimistic parent of the nerdy kid on sports day, right? Kind of, but no, not at all. So, let's assume it's like fitness, the suitable metaphor is sport? It's really not. Maybe I can take over from you, Betty. What the hell? Go for it. If your website is the face of your business, good performance is essential. But it often is difficult to know how to measure good performance. While it will depend on what kind of business or what kind of website you have, there are some general performance indicators that every website owner should know in order to guarantee a great user experience. Uptime. Uptime is the most important performance indicator for your website. Website downtime can result in reduced sales, your company reputation taking a hit, and far, far worse, angry tweets. Have mercy on your souls. Uptime is usually measured as a percentage. For your website, you should strive for five nines, 99.9999% uptime. <laughs> I couldn't remember how many nines. For a complete overview of your website's uptime, it is recommended to check the uptime from various locations. TTFB. No, TTFB is not some newfangled leak speak from the youth of today. It stands for time to first byte and measures the time between when the first HTTP request was sent to a server and when the user receives the first byte. TTFB is affected by the duration of three actions, sending the request to the HTTP server, processing and generating the response, and sending the response back to the client. TTFB is an important metric. Most users are impatient. 40% will abandon a website that takes longer than three seconds to load, even if it's loading kitten pictures. If your pages don't load quickly enough, users will bounce before being drawn in by your great content. Full page load time. Another key measurement is a website's loading time, which indicates how long it takes to download the entire source code of a specific page. A visitor to your website can only interact once all elements, including images and videos, have loaded. The longer that this takes, the less the chance is that the user will interact with your web page. Also, a short loading time not only improves user experience, but also your organic search rankings as well. Google has indicated page speed as one of the algorithm's ranking factors. Broken links. Broken links are bad for your business. No user wants to see a 404 page error. Not you, not me, not anyone in this room. Use tools like W3C Link Checker to check for broken links on your website. If you run a larger website, look for a professional tool that can be scheduled to run regularly and look for broken links, and notify you if it finds them. Also, best practices people, whenever you delete, remove, or rename pages, make sure you redirect the traffic to a valid URL page. Database performance. Many websites contain dynamic content pulled from a database. To ensure a smooth running website, keep an eye on database performance. Monitor the response times of your queries. Find out which queries are taking the longest to run and optimize those. Additionally, you should monitor the overall performance of the database and make sure it's not causing a bottleneck. It's also recommended to set up alerts if your queries return error messages or results outside of the expected values. Geographic performance. Monitor your website's speed and availability from different parts of the world, especially if you're a globally active company. Your web server's hardware. Just like for any server in your environment, you need to keep an eye on your web server's free disk space, CPU usage, and memory usage. Monitoring these aspects will ensure that you spot problems before they occur. It'll also help you spot problems over a longer time period. For example, if you spot that your CPU utilization is higher over an extended period of time, it might be time to upgrade the hardware. Website visitors. The more visitors that come to your website, the more sales it usually makes. But the increased traffic means higher load on the servers. Steadily increasing traffic might be a reason to upgrade the servers. Conversely, a drop in traffic might mean that you have a technical problem somewhere or that your content is just not good. But it's definitely the technical problems, right? A comprehensive free tool for getting in-depth statistics about website traffic is Google Analytics. Also, you want to be prepared for traffic spikes, such as when a marketing campaign suddenly brings loads of visitors to your website. Therefore, it is important to regularly run load tests on your website. A good tool for this is Load Impact, and it gives you five free stress tests to run on your website. 
By monitoring these performance indicators, you lay the foundation for a great website. Not just good, amazing, because I've forgotten what it was. Uh, high quality, <laughs> you lay the foundation for a high quality website. Does that make things clearer, Betty? Okay. I'm still looking for a suitable metaphor for the big picture, but a few things are clear now. Don't just monitor your website when it seems slow or people complain. Just because you've never heard of malfunctioning parachutes doesn't mean they don't exist. And keep your customers in mind, geeks. Don't neglect your website monitoring and then feel guilty about it later when things go wrong. Do you know what won't leave you feeling guilty? Subscribing to our channel.